Ladies and gentlemen, Mullet Mike Hardcastle here with the Piggy Paddle and Full Screen Networks bringing you Creepy Gaming. Consider this the Season 8 finale because we are going to dive deep into some RDR2 Easter eggs and scary locations. Now, unless you've been living under a cowboy hat shaped rock, then you already know about Red Dead Redemption. That being said, let's dig right in. Turn the lights down and the volume up as we journey into some creepy game. Lord have mercy! <laughs> Shit. Rockstar Games has always featured disturbing content, but I don't know if they've ever packed this much into a single game. I've seen a lot of Easter egg videos out there, but I wanted to try to compile every creepy Easter egg, scary location, and stranger mission that I could find all in this one video. As of the production of this episode, Red Dead Online has yet to launch, so I'm sure there will be plenty more down the road. Fair warning, we might cover a spoiler or two, but I will try to refrain from anything major. We have a lot to cover, so let's dig our spurs in and ride off into that sunset. Lord have mercy! <laughs> Shit. Much like the previous game in the series, you'll learn a lot about the local myths and legends from overhearing NPCs in the game talk about them. Well, in the weird world of Red Dead, giants apparently exist. You can actually find the remains of a giant skeleton up north. But that's not all. If you study 30 different species of animal, you may notice a strange flock of birds flying above. If you follow them, they will lead you to a cave opening, which you cannot enter. But you may just have a little convo with the last giant. Many players also theorize this mysterious cave dweller to be Bigfoot, and it very well could be. Bigfoot was already confirmed in Undead Nightmare, and he is pretty much the unofficial mascot of Rockstar Games, so it wouldn't be that far-fetched. Speaking of Bigfoot, if you travel west of the lake in West Elizabeth, you may run across these strange faces in the trees. To me personally, these just seem to be wood carvings, but some players swear that one of the faces is that of Bigfoot. Lord have mercy! <laughs> Shit. Next up on our guide to the weird world of Red Dead, go visit east of Mercer Station in Jorge's Gap. There you will find a cool but creepy callback to the first Red Dead Redemption. There was this bizarre glitch in the last game that would sometimes make the NPCs act like the game's animals. The one that caught most players' attention had to be what was later dubbed the Donkey Lady. That's because the glitch gave the NPC a donkey's head on a woman's body. Not only that, but you could actually ride her too. Oh, that's horrible. East of Mercer Station in RDR2, you can find the skeletal remains of the Donkey Lady. This was a nice touch for Rockstar Games. The only thing, Red Dead Redemption 2 is technically a prequel to the first game. So is this a different Donkey Lady? Can there be an entire race of donkey people? Oh lord, man, we're just getting started. Lord have mercy! Yeah. Once you make it to Chapter 3, you'll be pretty familiar with the Braithwaite Manor. Right outside of the mansion, to the east of the estate, you can spot an old outhouse. When you approach it, you may notice the door chained up. Inside is a woman driven mad, locked away. She even tries to reach through the moon to grab you. Here's the creepiest part. If you visit the outhouse after you beat the game, you'll see that the woman died. Speaking of skeletons and crazy people, there's plenty in this game. Since there's still a lot to cover, let's hotshot these next few, shall we? 
The random occurrences in this game range from funny to flat out disturbing. There are bushwhackers and plenty of crazy people. There's a deformed family out in Butcher's Creek. In the town of Rhodes, the gunsmith goes mad and kidnaps a full-grown man, chains him to a bed, and expects him to role-play as his quote-unquote son. Cannibals make their return from the first Red Dead Redemption, and a man lives in a cave who claims to be the devil himself. So, yeah. Crazy people galore. Just like the real world. So now that we quickly ran through some of the crazy folk, let's talk about the various skeletons and remains. We've already discussed the giant skeleton, but RDR2 also features a whale skeleton out in the middle of the desert, indicating that this was once a vast ocean. Skeletal remains of a conquistador, a Spanish monk, and even a pirate can all be found throughout the weird world of Red Dead. There are also plenty of allusions to early man, Harpy statues, a Viking shrine, even a fossilized skeleton can be found up north. The randomness is great. You can find a pair of abandoned circus wagons near Manzanita Post. Inside you'll see this creepy doll. In the other wagon you can find the skeleton of Siamese twins. Want another random creepy easter egg? Of course you do! The green mask that started the zombie outbreak in Undead Nightmare can actually be found. Nice touch. One last bit of randomness I want to discuss is the funeral carriage. If you stumble across this old broken down wagon, you'll notice that the coffin has been removed with the lid off and the body missing. There is a man hanging nearby, but it is still unknown whether this was the cadaver in question or the wagon's driver. Now that we ran through some random creepiness, let's get to the good stuff. Lord have mercy! <laughs> Shit. If you go to the crossing in Scarlet Meadows next to the old Green Bank Mill between 2 a.m. and 3 a.m., you will see an actual ghost train. You can cross right through it without taking any damage. It's very bizarre, but overall, a really nice callback to the original Red Dead Revolver. Now, if you thought this was the only ghost easter egg in the game, you would be mistaken. Now, the weird world of Red Dead is no stranger to the supernatural. Haunted areas existed in the last game with the town of Tumbleweed and such. Now, in Red Dead Redemption 2, in addition to Tumbleweed, you also have Roanoke Woods and the infamous Blue Water Marsh. The Roanoke Woods was more than likely named after the real-life Roanoke Colony, or the Lost Colony as it has been called, in which approximately 115 people went missing. Lord have mercy! <laughs> Shit. This area has to feature the most disturbing content in the game. There is so much in-game paranormal activity. Let's start with the Night Folk. Some people theorize that the Night Folk are this game's version of the undead, but to me personally, they seem smarter, more sentient. They're something more. Look at that. He fresh. You see what I mean? This Night Folk work. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <gasps> Other than the night folk, visiting Blue Water Marsh between 9 p.m. and 3 a.m., you may see a full-body apparition. This is believed to be the ghost of in-game character Agnes Dowd. If you visit this apparition, she will call out to you as if you were her lover. You can keep visiting her, but ultimately one night you'll eventually see the ghost of poor Agnes hanging from a nearby tree. You were just a hillbilly white trash like my mama always said. To make matters even more disturbing, visit the old rundown plantation house where your gang eventually sets up camp. Behind the home to the south, you'll see a family burial plot. 
On closer inspection, we see that this is the grave of Agnes Dowd herself. Lord have mercy! <laughs> Shit. Now, before we get to our final Easter eggs and theories, let's hotshot some more random creepiness. Most people already know about the mad scientist lab. This creature is a bizarre amalgamation of man with various animal parts, specifically a boar and a bear. I can't help but feel this is a South Park homage to Man Bear Pig. Most players already know about the Look Upon My Words serial killer, which is disturbing in its own right, but did you know that there is a vampire in St. Denis writing his own messages, but this time in other people's blood? The character model is obviously based off of Count Orlok from the silent horror classic Nosferatu. Lord have mercy! <laughs> Shit. Now, in the weird world of Red Dead, satanic cult should come as no surprise. If you visit Butcher's Creek between 4 a.m. and 5 a.m., you will see a red pentagram glowing underneath the small shed. It's even been said that you can sacrifice a goat here and you'll hear a strange noise, although I haven't done this myself yet. There are other cults in the game as well, such as the Church of the Turtle, yeah, that's a thing, which you can encounter during a side quest. Many players suggest that this bizarre group is actually the beginnings to the Epsilon program from GTA V but more on that in a bit. Go to the west of the town of Strawberry and you'll discover this ritualistic sacrifice. Could this be connected to one of the various cults? Near Emerald Ranch, you can actually find a cult mass suicide, but to make matters worse, a UFO can be spotted above this same location, leading many players to theorize that this cult's altar must be tied in together in some way. I must admit, this makes the Epsilon theory much more plausible, but it doesn't end there. A second UFO can be spotted at 2 a.m. above Mount Shan. There's even been a supposed third UFO discovered somewhere in the desert, but I haven't seen it personally, so I can't really comment on it just yet. This adds another paranormal layer to the already weird world of Red Dead. Which brings me to my final creepy theory. This has been discussed for a while now, but this game just adds more fuel to the fire. It has been speculated that the Red Dead and GTA universes are the same. Supposedly, Michael DeSanta from GTA V is in the game. It's still unclear to me or not whether this is the character himself, or an old ancestor, or just a cameo from actor Ned Luke who played Michael in GTA V. For the record, Ned Luke is in the end credits for Red Dead Redemption 2, and the actor has since confirmed it himself on Twitter. Oh no, I'm getting Mount Chiliad flashbacks. Mm. There's even what has since been dubbed the time travel side quest that could help further these theories. Man, there's a lot. Now, just a friendly reminder, this video has been in production for the last few weeks, so I am almost positive more has been discovered since. Maybe I can cover it down the road and make an epilogue sometime. But just because the sun is setting for now doesn't mean it won't rise again. I would like to thank you all so much for watching and supporting Creepy Gaming Season 8. I am Mullet Mike with the battle in full screen saying keep stay creepy. Thank you all so much for watching. Peace.